Hi guys, welcome to Necessarily Tiffany. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning for yet another video, welcome back, Necessarily Family. Guys, Noelle is down. She's not asleep yet, but she's down, and so I'm ready for some couch time and adult conversations. And by the title of this video, I'm sure you're wondering why we're here and what I have to talk about. But today was a long day, so I want to tell you about my day, my thought process, and everything as I'm getting unready for the day. Um, so as people get ready for the day, I'm getting unready, I'm winding down, I'm going to take off this face and we're going to just talk a little bit and give you an update. So, um, if you guys haven't really seen me in 2020, um, if you follow me on social media, I do post on Instagram, um, I post on my personal Facebook, but, um, if you haven't really seen me in 2020, first thing I'm going to use is Garnier Micellar Water, love Micellar Water, it takes off your makeup, so. Well, first let me take off these strip lashes. Ardell Wispies, they're the bomb. Um, but uh, you haven't really seen me in 2020 because um, I've been lying to you all. I've been lying um, to a lot of people actually. Um, and what I mean when I say this is that um, when I say, when you guys all ask me how I'm doing, because I am not gonna lie, I have some of the best followers. Um, from the blog, people emailing me or commenting on the blog, to people, you know, commenting on YouTube or asking me how I am on YouTube. You guys always ask me how I'm doing and all I say is I'm good. For most of you, I say I'm good. And that's a lie. Um, so the reason why I don't, I've been struggling to bring content is because I, um, didn't want to only talk about, you know, everything that I've got going on. Because as you guys are like following me and are friends with me uh, on social media, like you've seen my life like play out in real time from the start of this blog to now. Um, and so I struggled because I didn't want to bring what I was going through um, to my social media platforms, um, being my blog and my YouTube. So next, really quick, I'm just gonna use a makeup uh, cloth. Um, these take off makeup. If you buy some, you can get them on Amazon, but there are other places that sell them. But if you buy these, be very gentle because you can really like mess up your face if you scrub too hard, so. But it typically gets all my makeup off and gets me ready for oil cleanser and then, you know, everything else. So, um, but I was like struggling because I didn't want to talk about my grief on YouTube. I didn't want YouTube just to be the place where I just talked about the loss of my father and my sister. So I would go on to create content, um, continuing to be in shambles. Um, so I was lying. I was lying about everything being okay. I wasn't only lying to you guys. I was lying to my family. I was lying to my mom. And I was lying to my husband. I thought that if I could mask how I was feeling, still going through grief, that everyone would just be, you know, be okay. I didn't really think about how I would feel in my grief, but I thought I wanted everybody to think that I was okay. I wanted everybody else to like rest in knowing I was okay when I wasn't. Um, so, uh, uh, I'm still dealing. I'm still. I don't know, I don't know like the phases of grief or whatever, but I'm like in the process, it's like, I'm in the part where I'm angry, but it's like realization starting to set in. And it really set in for me um, about two weeks ago when I was talking to my daughter and um, she was like, you know, I can't call my Auntie Tuna anymore. She called my sister Tiona Tuna. And I was like, why? She was like, because I can't call heaven. 
So that night, literally, me and Marcus were watching a movie and in good Marcus fashion, he falls asleep in the first 10 minutes. Um, and I was literally paralyzed by grief when it like hit me what she said. Like I was just laying there crying. I was crying. I was sobbing uncontrollably. And it, I was sobbing so hard, it woke him up. And then I just had to talk about it. Like I'm mad. I'm just mad because it's like, there's so many bad people in the world. And they had to go and it's like, Um, some days I remember telling you guys once before that some days I can't get off the couch and this was months ago this was probably in the fall and it's still like that some days some days I still am like paralyzed by grief um, and I realized that faking that and faking that I'm all right with everyone um, it doesn't help me. It doesn't, it doesn't help me at all. It doesn't help me be honest. And it also hinders my creativity because I can't fake something that I'm not. I really just didn't want to bring my sadness to necessarily Tiffany. I didn't want this channel to be like all about, uh, you know, grief, all about sadness. But when I made it, it wasn't, it was just followed along with me. And it's just like you guys have followed along with me in some of the darkest times in my life. And it's like, I want to bring new content, but I was talking to a good friend today. Her name is Doris. Follow Doris on, on YouTube and Instagram. And, you know, I was telling her, like, my fears. Like, I don't want, you know, it's not about losing followers. It's just, like, not being real with my content. And she was like, you know, how do you know this will help someone else? How do you know this will help you? And that's real. So let me tell you where I was at about two days ago. Two days ago being Saturday, just Saturday night. I thought God hated me. I thought God hated me because there's just so much going on. And there's just so much that I just could sit and cry about all day just thinking about everything that everything that I've got going on in my life everything that I'm dealing with and it's like how God how is there like no reprieve and just going to church I actually wasn't going to go to church on Sunday I was literally telling Marcus in the car on Saturday I was like, you know, I don't want to go. I, mean, I don't think I'm going to church on Sunday. But I heard it in my spirit. And it was like, you need to just run the church. Just run everything out. Run all this anger. Run all this aggression. I ran five miles to church. And I, I've done it often. I used, to do, I used to do it once a month in the summertime. But in the middle of February, like, I ran five miles to church. Um... And my pastor, and I didn't tell him that I felt like God hated me. I told it to Marcus and I told it to my mom. Uh, we were sitting here one day and I just was like, guys, you know, I think God hates me. And as a reassuring me that he doesn't, and we're, you know, we're all going through it. And um, like, I just, I just couldn't hear anything they were saying because it's just been hit after hit after hit after hit. I didn't tell my pastor that. And I'm sure my mom or my brother, my, my brother, I'm sure my mom or my husband didn't. But on Sunday, he gave me a hug and he said, I, I can, he was, he was praying. And he was like, you know, God, like, we know you love her. We know you don't hate her. 
And I'm like, man, like, I didn't even tell this man that. It's been a, to a point where I stopped praying about, like, things that I need. Like, my prayers have been as basic as God, keep my family, bless my house, my family, my finances. God, keep me. That's all I would pray. Um, it's to a point where Noel's prayers, Noel prays for way more stuff than I do. Like, I'm just, you know, just just keep me, God, because I don't know what else. And in the midst of all the turmoil of my mind and all of that, like, realizing now that God has kept me, God has kept my family. Am I okay? No. Sudden deaths are the worst. Um, it's just like, there's no time to say what you want to say. There's, you know, there's just no time because we're just gone. So going forward, I'm going to work on content creation. I know I told you guys that in my New Year's resolution video, but um, February was a hard month. Um, it's just certain things trigger me into sadness and the death of Kobe and Gianna Bryant was one that really just kind of led me to intense sadness. Um, and there was just no explaining it. It was just, I was just sad. And then it was just, you know, everything on top of that. Um, but I am going to do my best to get out of the house. Um, make more videos. Love those that love me. And if you're wondering, yes, I am going to seek therapy. Um, right now maybe not like not not at this like direct like this week i'm not going to i've been looking into a few grief groups here in cincinnati first just to kind of be in a group um setting and then seek out a therapist to talk about this because i realize there's so much stuff that i haven't even told you guys about 2019 um yet i will but there's so much stuff that I haven't told you about 2019 that I actually, that, that were traumatic and things that I probably should speak to someone about. Um, but going forward, I am going to talk about my grief. I know every video that I've done has just been like me just kind of like filming on my phone, like just like laying on the couch, but I'm actually going to set up lights and I'm going to talk to you guys about this stuff because I realize it's important. I realize that people die. Loved ones die. People lose people. And this could help someone. Me talking out, me talking to the camera. I have nothing written down, nothing prepared. Um, I just wanted to record myself just kind of vomiting my thoughts. And um, this actually might help somebody. And even as I'm watching it again, it may help me. Am I better than May 31st? Um, yes, am I better than July, you know, 19th because my sister passed on the 18th? Um, yes. Am I fully healed? I don't think I'll ever be. but I'm working to make it better. I don't know why I stopped praying because God has been the only thing that's been my strength through all of this. And maybe my prayers are selfish because I just want to hear their voice. I just want to even talk. Can I talk to them in my dream? Can it something, you know, just something to make it hurt less. But maybe it's only time.
Maybe it's only time. It really hurts me, you know, when people say that I'm not who I used to be before all of this. And it doesn't hurt me because they feel that way. Um, it hurts me because I feel like I'm robbing. I'm robbing those that I love of who I am. Maybe my light doesn't shine as brightly as it used to. But the fear of death and just praying that I don't lose anybody else right now, you know, um, it The fear of death really like has a hold on me sometimes. But I know I have to change that. I have a, an amazing family. I don't know how my mom does it. I have a child. I birthed a child. I can't imagine losing my child. But all I can do is be there for her and my brothers. My oldest brother is just so strong and, and he amazes me like every day, just how he just gets up and goes. He always makes sure everybody's good, you know, and uh my brother JR who's in Lake County still I um I text him from time to time but I I, I think he's I think he's okay he's about as you know confused as you know just baffled at all this happening as you know we are I can't really get a read on Justin and Lucas it's weird I can't get a read on them but I know they're all you know we're all dealing in our own way but for me, sometimes I feel like a loser because like, it seems like everybody's dealing like in a healthy way and I don't even know if I am, you know, I don't know. And this is me just guessing because I don't know what they do in their private time, but for that little bit of time, I really gave up on, on hope. I gave up on hope that I'll, I'll stop hurting. But going forward, there are some things I'm, I have to do. A, I have to get my hope back. I have to. I have to have faith. Leaning on the word of God, leaning on God, talking to God, really has been the only way that I've made it through this far. Holding on to his promise. He's not going to leave me. He's not going to forsake me. My family. I have an amazing husband. <sighs> I ask a lot of my husband. <laughs> Sometimes it's simple stuff, but I still ask a lot. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. If you have a, a spouse, ask continually. That's how they know what you need. But asking my husband to deliver the eulogy at my sister's funeral was probably one of the hardest questions I had to ask because I knew he wouldn't say no. But I know how much he loved her, too. And I know how much he loves my family. And just to stand up there, watch us all be upset, you know, and still delivering that. But um, he's been amazing. He's been very attentive, very protective of me, um, very supportive. 
Because I'm going to be honest, I've had multiple videos recorded, multiple videos edited, ready to upload on YouTube. And I've like, I've deleted them all um, because it looks forced. It looks like I'm fake happy and I know it. And those who really know me that really watch this channel know it. So I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that to the people who take their time out to watch my videos. Um, and he supported me in that. It wasn't never because lights, you know, cameras, none of this stuff is free or cheap. I haven't got any of this free or cheap. So um, knowing that I made an investment in this stuff and I wasn't using it for a little while, he was still very supportive and I'm grateful for that. But most importantly, having the love of my child. She didn't quite know, you know, what was going on um, or what's going on with mommy, but she gives me like a little extra grace if I'm sad or, and it, it's just, it, it's an unsaid thing. She'll just come give me a hug. And it's been amazing. Surrounding myself with amazing friends, you know, our families really, you know, buckling down around us and our communities, our villages, just praying for us. Um, you guys have been amazing. My followers, you guys from Instagram messages to emails, you guys have been amazing. And I promise I won't rob you guys of who I am anymore. I don't want it to be forced. I don't want, I'm just gonna tell you if it's times that I talk about grief, if this is too heavy for you, by all means, please skip over and watch the next video. But it's just important that I say this because it's been very difficult for me. Death is so final when you're still here on this earth. And when the people that you love are gone, especially people that you just thought every day that they just had more time. So I will um, check in with you guys about this from time to time. Um, as you know, some days are great. Some days I can hear a song, watch a movie. I still pick up the phone and text my sister or the Facebook caller because I always called her at work. <laughs> we, no matter what job she had, we video chat every day. Um, or even just talking to my dad and hearing his voice. Um, thank you all for your concern. Thank you all for your love and your kindness and your patience. I just had to get that out and to tell you all the truth because as I was robbing those who know me, I was robbing you guys too because you tune in and I don't want to show you anything that's fake because it's not my life. So going forward, now that this is out, I can be honest and say what I have to say to you guys because you are my family. Um, I love you guys. Just continue to pray for me because I'm praying that it gets easier. But I took all my makeup off, two simple steps. <laughs> I've been crying so my eyes are probably puffy. But um, I'm just going to go in and wash my face with some um, some face wash. Um, we put my serums on and my night cream and then that's it. But I love you guys. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I promise that I'm coming with new content. I love you guys. <laughs>